Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement called the White River Line, inspired by the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks. In this episode, I'm going to continue working on the coaling tower that I started in the last episode. I'm hoping I can get all the way through it, but there's still quite a bit of work left to do, so let's jump on into it. As a part of my pre-assembly process, I started getting to work on some of the details. These coal chutes are a bit of a puzzle, and the somewhat pixelated diagrams don't help much. As I started assembling the chutes, I noticed a lot of ejector pin marks. I like to avoid filling these in, but since I'm not quite certain how these fit together, I don't want to leave them and have to fill them in after the pieces are assembled. As I started to assemble the pieces, I struggled to keep them in place while gluing them. I grabbed a bit of sticky tack to hold them in place while applying the cement. The pins from the top of the chutes aren't glued in. They fit into holes on the sides so that they can pivot. So while I used thin cement for most of the assembly, I used thick cement for this final piece to give me a little more control. I used a little manual manipulation while the cement was still a little tacky to make sure the pieces were square. Now onto the larger chutes for the outside of the tower. Since I'd assembled the inside chutes first, I was able to determine that I didn't really need to fill the ejector pin marks on a couple of these pieces for the larger chutes. I'm struggling a bit with this putty. If you've got a recommendation for a better putty, or have tips for my technique, please let me know in the comments below. With both the inside and the outside coal chutes complete, I decided to add a little texture. I demoed this in my last video on the concrete for the base. I flooded the plastic with some cement and used a stiff brush to texture it. This texture might be a little exaggerated, but it will be a nice detail. Before moving on to the stairs and railings, I want to give a little more thought to any sub-assembly I do here. While pondering this, I decided to get started on painting the main parts of the structure I assembled in my last video. I started with Israeli Sand Gray Primer. And then I used Concrete for a base color. I then painted individual boards, posts, and beams using Vallejo wood, golden brown, and light brown. In addition to these three base colors, I also mixed them together to create a wider variety of hues.
I try to be as random as possible. Humans seem to be made to create and discern patterns and any pattern I might accidentally create would jump out immediately and distract from the whole of the piece. This work is a bit tedious. Eventually, acrylic paints dry out in the palette, and I really only got about 15 to 20 minutes of working time before they were dry beyond use. When painting a piece this big, that can be a hassle. I'm thinking about picking up a wet palette like I've seen some other modelers here on YouTube use. At one point, I began to question the wisdom of adding these beams and such during sub-assembly. It would have made the airbrush process for primer and base color a bit more tedious, but now it is making some of this detail painting a little more frustrating. However, in the end, the time I saved not only during the airbrushing, but also from not having to prep these pieces for assembly later, makes this little bit of frustration worth it. I'm not too worried about being precise with this paint. Sloppy isn't a problem in this case, as long as it isn't too sloppy. While I used three colors for painting the boards, when it came to the beams and post, I only used golden brown and wood and various mixtures of them. I didn't really spend too much time on the bin floor. It's barely going to be seen, and at this point in the process, I'm a little worn out. I've probably spent four or five hours with this paint job. Using the light brown, I did a bit of dry brushing on the posts, beams, and other pieces. I've painted with just the two dark colors. This might be considered a bit more than dry brushing, as I didn't unload my brush as much as I normally would. Maybe you could call this damp brushing? I added a gloss clear coat. These pieces are ready for the next step. I'm actually pretty happy with this treatment. From far enough away, it looks pretty convincing. And if I'm looking for a raw wood look, I could tighten this work up a little bit and have a really nice finish. One note. I didn't paint this ridge here. Uh, I'm just kind of making this stuff up, but I'm going to say this is an iron beam used for support, and I'll paint it black later. I mixed up some Obtilung brown wash with some odorless thinner and applied it to both the conveyor tower section and the coal bin section. After letting it dry for about an hour, I went back in with a clean, dry brush and softened out some of the edges of this wash. In some cases, I did dampen the brush with a little odorless thinner, just to get the paint to move a little bit more than it was doing so with the dry brush. As I was going through this editing process, I did notice a couple of issues. First, the conveyor tower section didn't really get as dark as I wanted with the first wash and it didn't flow into the wood grain and seams as much as I would have liked. So I applied a second coat. As I'm learning to use these oil paints, this is the first piece I've used them on, I'm still figuring out how to thin them and how aggressively to apply them. The second problem I've noticed is that the wash didn't settle into the corners of the beams as much as I hoped it would. I kind of expected this wash to cover up the fact that I didn't paint all the way into the corners with my detail colors. 
I thinned down some of the brown wash oil paint, although not as much as I did for the general wash. I applied this specifically in the corners. Then after letting it dry for a bit, I faded it out to create a gradient. Now that I was satisfied, I added a matte clear coat. I used one part Tamiya X21 flat base to three parts Revive It floor polish, which was then thinned down with isopropyl alcohol at a ratio of one to one. I'll give credit to John over at JC's Rip Track for this method. If you haven't already, check out his fantastic video on clear coats. I've got a link in the description below. After letting this clear coat dry, I started taking care of some other details. Now, I simply forgot to paint this support piece for the stairs. I intended to paint it, you know, wood like the rest of it. I guess I'll just make it iron. And I used Vallejo Dark Gray for this. I also used dark gray for the iron beam on the bin. But after I let these two things dry, I didn't feel like it was dark enough, so I went back in with some Mission Tire Black. I used the same color for this little bit, I'm, I'm not sure what it's called. And for the support pieces for the pulleys for the coal chute rigging. Then I painted each of the bolt heads for the beams. Next, I used sky gray to paint the door and windows for the head house. One final piece of detail, for now, was to apply a pin wash on the bolt heads and around all the other iron parts. For this I used a Tilung 502 bitume. I softened up the edges on the pin wash with a little odorless thinner. I'll apply another flat clear coat to set this in a little bit later, but for now I'm going to revisit the stairs and railings. My goal is to do as much assembly before painting as possible, as much as makes sense. However, I have two concerns. One, how likely am I to break these pieces during the painting process? Two, how confident do I feel that I can assemble them accurately beforehand? These bits for the stairs can be a little bit fiddly, and getting a handrail just a millimeter or even less out of alignment could cause problems during final assembly. After playing around with some dry fitting, I decided to keep the pieces separate during paint and save the assembly for the end. With the exception of this railing on the top landing and the support bracket for the second landing. Having gotten this sorted out, I went back to the main structure and completed a couple more assembly steps. First, I attached the conveyor tower to the base and the dump shed. I used my thickest CA glue for this.
Second, after a bit of dry fitting, I glued the bin floor braces to the back of the coal bin. Then, a bit of final dry fitting for the coal bin section to double check my work. Hopefully I can get this project all completed in my next video, but it might take some time for me to get that video out to y'all. Spring break for the kids is next week, and I'm busy with family stuff. And I've got some camping with our scout troop on the schedule too. As always, thanks for joining me on this episode. Please click on the like button, it's the best way you can help me promote my videos. Subscribing, well, it's always appreciated too. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and those links are in the video description, along with the tools and supplies I use. Please join me again next time as I continue modeling the White River Line.